Your Meta Ads account structure should be one thing that you are not worrying about in 2025. Meta has literally told us the optimal structure. There are countless tutorials on how to do this. And frankly, it all boils down to this. That's it. That is the structure that brands are using to scale and grow in 2025. Now, I've seen all of your burning questions about Meta Ads in 2025, and I am going to answer most of those in this video. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into the only account structure that you need in 2025. Typically, this is my core starting campaign structure for nearly any e-commerce brand. You're going to have your creative testing campaign, which is going to be a standard sales objection campaign, and you're going to have your ASC or Advantage Plus shopping campaign. Now, of course, you could have more or less campaigns depending on your budget, but for most brands, I'd say that this is a really good starting point. And if you're wondering about how to set up your creative testing campaign exactly, I actually have a video that details the right way for you to set up your creative testing campaign depending on your budget, because I think it's really different to test creatives for a brand that's only spending five or 10K per month versus a brand that is spending five million per month. Month, and that video is going to show you exactly how to do all of those. Now, your ASC campaign could be considered a scaling campaign. This is something that I've talked about in years past. You have your creative testing campaign, whatever works in there, you scale it up in the creative testing campaign, and then also duplicate that to your ASC campaign. However, I'll be honest, in 2025, I have a much more liberal view on what is a winner and what I am scaling or duplicating to the ASC campaign. Yes, if something is doing really well in creative testing, I will duplicate it to the ASC campaign, but I might also be launching ASC campaigns that have already historical top performers from months or even years past. And if there's something that I think for whatever reason, it didn't work as well in creative testing, maybe it'd be better on a more retargeting type audience. That's also something I might duplicate into ASC. So why this structure, right? We want to separate creative testing from scaling or from your other campaigns so that you can give creatives a chance to perform by throttling a little bit of cash to it. This isn't really something that we did in the days of tofu, mofu, and bofu. And the reason why we don't really use that campaign structure anymore is because actually retargeting isn't something that I do on most of my brands, even if they're spending 500K to a million dollars per month. So why doesn't retargeting work as well in 2025? Well, yes, it can often be the most efficient way to get sales or even have the best ROAS. Using retargeting isn't actually a good way to get people to discover you. And it's not as scalable. So if you tend to overfocus on retargeting campaigns, then the people that are actually discovering your brand is going to dry up. It's actually way better to teach the algorithm how to find your purchasers on a scalable, broad audience. Also, the meta ad algorithm is so smart in 2025. You can literally have the algorithm pointed to a cold and broad audience and say, hey, find my purchasers. And honestly, that is the most effective way to do so. Now, the reason why I don't do funnels, so that would be reach campaigns, brand awareness campaigns, engagement campaigns is Honestly, oftentimes these people are not incrementally leading to sales. My one caveat here is that unless you are spending multiple seven figures a month, this is something that I have seen Meta do lift tests on that have actually proven, yes, we are able to find people who eventually convert to purchasers down the line, but sometimes that journey can take months, even years in the process at which for most brands, it's really not worth it for them to have engagement campaigns and reach campaigns and brand awareness campaigns. Now, I know you're looking at the simple campaign structure and the first question that people always ask me is what if I have multiple products? And actually let's have a quick sidebar on this because I think it is so, so important. I think it's actually going to interest you to know that when I first start working with a brand, I'm typically not zeroing in immediately on their top performing creatives and what's working the best and how to iterate on them. I'm actually first looking at their product assortment, what type of products are actually working on meta ads and if there's any availability with specific bundles or any way to optimize those. Sure, I could start working with a new brand and see that they are selling a $50 hairbrush that is doing really well on meta ads and spend all of my time and effort trying to create new creatives that cuts that CPA in half. When frankly, that is often going to be a losing battle from the start because that AOV is actually too 
low to be scalable on Meta Ads. Meta Ads costs and CPMs are likely to continue increasing, so you need to make your business economics make sense. That's why when I'm initially doing an audit with a brand, I'm looking at what type of bundled products could really make sense and really attack a core problem that I know users are having that are on Instagram and Facebook. So how can you conduct research for this type of thing and actually discover what is actually selling? Particle is my go-to for analyzing what products and bundles are actually moving the needle for D2C brands. Now, this is real-time sales data. They can also detail product launches and sales periods, which is wildly helpful. I also particularly love the marketing events section where I can take a peek at their socials, emails, and yes, even their ads. It's seriously one of my most favorite tools, so be sure to sign up in the link in the description for a free 14-day trial. Now, back to this very important question, what if I have multiple? Multiple products. And a big learning that I've had overall is if you force spend to specific products by creating unique campaigns, it's often going to be sacrificing efficiency. Just because you have 50 products does not mean that you need to advertise 50 products. Some are going to be better sold through email, through SMS, or through customers that you've already acquired through some other channels. So often something that's in the back of my head is how can I find the most scalable product bundle offer for Meta specifically that I can really pull all of my resources into? So what can you actually do if you have multiple products, right? The first thing that I would always do is launch a catalog ad campaign, which means yes, in most cases, this would mean that you have three campaigns now. So you'd have your creative testing campaign, your ASC campaign, and then an ASC campaign dedicated solely to catalog ads. Now I have found that I really like keeping the catalog ads and the ASC campaign a little bit separate because sometimes the spend will actually go all towards the catalog ads. So I like to keep those in separate campaigns. Now last year I did a huge deep dive video on all things deep. DPA and catalog ads, let me know if you want an updated one for 2025 because there are some really new interesting things happening there this year. And another question I get asked is, oh, should I use different ASCs for different products? Now I have seen this a number of times, but I've also seen that it is not the most efficient, but sometimes brands will want to do this because they want to make sure that they are throttling a certain amount of spend towards these products because of retail spillover or because of inventory concerns. Maybe it's a perishable and they need to make sure that certain amount of product gets out the door. So in that case, yes, I've seen brands do that, but to be honest, it's not the most optimal performance wise. And then another question I get asked is what if I am advertising in different countries? And I will say, Oftentimes, yes, I am seeing brands use different campaigns when targeting or advertising in different countries. Now, for some brands that target worldwide, oftentimes I will see them have a specific ASC campaign that is set up for worldwide targeting. But in most cases, the best brands I see start with one country or one location, and then they expand a little bit more slowly. So they will have a creative testing campaign that is targeting their biggest market. Oftentimes it's the US. This is how it was with the brand that I was working with last year. And then we would create scaling campaigns or ASC campaigns campaigns for the other countries and then create localized language around the creative formats and types that we already know worked really well. So this means that we are not doing creative testing for US, creative testing for Australia or UK. Yes, sometimes the creatives that perform will end up being a little bit different, but to be honest, I haven't found that it was a good use of resources to conduct creative testing across all of these different countries. Typically, we will creative test in your biggest market and then transfer those learnings to the other country campaigns. So if you were a makeup brand, for instance, that was targeting mostly the United States, but you also were beginning to sell product and advertise in UK, Australia, then what your creative structure might look like is you would have a creative testing campaign that is dedicated to the United States only. And then a ASC campaign or a scaling campaign that was dedicated to the US and then the same for UK, 
Australia and in any other countries that you're advertising in. And if you had multiple products, maybe add a DPA campaign on top of that. This is also one where I find that sometimes brands will do a DPA campaign for the specific countries. Sometimes they'll do worldwide. It's really just about testing to see what works the best for you long term. Now, I know since you are watching on YouTube, you've probably also watched other advertisers show their campaign structures. And yes, many times they are going to be different. There are different ways to succeed on this platform in 2025. But this is the core campaign setup that I've seen many brands find success with, even if they were spending up to 500K per month. Sometimes brands just use this core setup right here. But yes, oftentimes they are going to add different campaigns and different setups for a myriad of reasons, which we've already discussed. My business partner, Miguel, uses the one campaign setup, which he details in this video. And this is something that I've seen him have success with, with brands that are spending more than a million dollars per month. So that's also another option. And of course, if you saw my recent video with Seed where they detailed their creative testing methodology, then you know that they actually pour most of their monthly budget into ASC creative testing. So on any given month, they might launch four to five new creative tests, each in its own ASC campaign. And this is what they have as their core campaign structure at any given time. It's just ASC campaigns that are housing new creative tests. From what I understand, yes, sometimes they will take their top performers and launch them into a super ASC. But for the most part, they are just scaling what is working in those individual ASCs, which is a pretty different methodology than what I've described here. But for most brands, even those that are just starting off spending 5k per month or even less than that, all the way up to 500k per month plus, this core setup is something that I would highly, highly recommend because it's a great way for you to test individual creatives and also lean into Meta Ads Advantage Plus product where they are seeing the most efficiencies overall on the platform. If you have any questions about this video or about your core campaign setup or how you're doing things, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to help you out and I will see you guys next week. Love you. Bye.